uh, we are looking at a parallel circuit and therefore the voltages must be the same. The currents will not be the same, but the total current will be the sum of the currents. So let's go into this lab right now. So the document is what you see there, right there. All of the equipment you should already have with you. So the first circuit that you have to connect is shown here. And this is the circuit that we have to connect. Uh, let me give you a better version of that right here. So you have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3 connected in parallel. And then you have these cables connecting S2 to S3, another one from S3 to S4, another from S6 to S7, and then the last one from S7 to S8. We're going to connect the multimeter between these two. So they are what? C4 and C8. Or you could connect them between these two also. They are the same. So that's where the multimeter is going to be. That is the circuit we're going to use. Excuse me. So you should be able to see the circuit right here. So that's R1, R2, and R3 connected. You see the cables connected. And I also have the multimeter, which is out of, out of view. So let me bring that in to the view. Okay. So there is the multimeter connector. Now remember that although I have these batteries uh, in the uh, cases right there, they are not being used. So that's very important. You must not have the batteries in the circuit. Okay? They are just sitting there. They're not being used because there is no cable connecting the batteries to the circuit. Remember that. And the, the first thing we got to do is you take the multimeter and we're going to measure resistance. So put it on 20 kilo ohms. As you may be able to see now, I put it on 20 kilo ohms, which is right here. And then it reads 0 0.07. So that's 0 0.07 kilo ohms. You always have to use the maximum scale first. So now that I know that the resistance is much lower, I can move it to the 2 kilo ohms. So I move it to the 2 kilo ohms and I get 0 0.070 kilo ohms. Well, it's still small, so I move it to the 200 ohms. And now I find that the resistance is 71.1 ohm. Next, what we need to do is we remove R3 from the circuit, like I'm doing now. Be careful. R3 is out of the circuit. And look at what it reads. Oh, when I removed R3 and I was having it still on the 200 ohms, it was not reading because it went beyond and above that scale. So I moved it to the 2 kilo ohms. And immediately I get 2.244, 0 0.244 kilo ohms, which is 244 ohms. Next, what we got to do is we got to put back uh, the R3, put back the R3 and remove R2, take out R2. And now it reads, 0 0.076 ohms, 0 0.076 ohms. Next up, uh, I'll put back R2 and remove R1. So we are actually having different resistances now in parallel. Now you have R2 and R3 in parallel and it reads 0 0.090 kilo ohms or 90.9, well, 91 ohms. It's reading 91 ohms. So be careful about what scale you put it on and read it accordingly. So you see where we are going with this. Uh, in this table two, 
we have measured R1 in parallel with R2, R1 in parallel with R3, R2 in parallel with R3, and all three in parallel. So you have measured four combination resistances. And for each one of them, you need to calculate the resistance using 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and find the percentage error each case. So it's coming up now. And then make sure you take the uh, voltage sensor and turn it on, power it on. Go to hardware setup. We've done this so you should know. It detects the voltage sensor. And once it does, oh, I had to click on this and select it here and pull and drag it to the center. And we are trying to measure voltage. So select, click on that. And now you will have voltage here. So you get the voltage. One thing what you can, that you can do is you can increase the, uh, the number of digits or decrease it. It's good to increase it like I did now. Oh, uh, I found out that you have to have a cable connected between the positive and the negative here. Make sure you connect that cable. See, from the positive to the negative. Okay, because first I was thinking there is an internal connection. Seemingly there is none. So that's not given in the document. So please connect that cable from the positive of the lower a battery to the negative of the upper one. Once you do that, now take the uh, positive of the voltage sensor connected here, because that's the positive side. This is the negative side, so connected to the negative. And if you press down on the switch and hit record, you will get the voltage. Let me show you that. Okay. So right now you see it's 3.165 something voltage. Read that. So that's what you do is you take that uh, voltage sensor connected across R2 again. Be careful about the positives and the negatives. Don't switch them. So now it's connected across R2. Do the same. Press down on the switch and hit record and you would uh, see the measurement now. It's again, it's like 3.16. Are they supposed to be the same? Yes, the voltages in parallel are the same. That's what we're trying to prove. So finally, take that uh, and connect it across R3. Across R3, like I've done now, across R3. And uh, once again, hit uh, press the switch, hit record, and measure the voltage, which is again the same, kind of the same. Hit stop. So that's where we're going with this. Okay, so you see. So you got to measure four voltages, uh, which is voltage one across resistance one voltage two voltage three and then you got to move this uh, to the common terminal which is what i'm trying to show so you get the voltage across all three of them so put the voltage sensor here you know so you get the voltage across all three of them now see where i've connected them and then Press the switch and uh, hit record. You should be able to see the voltage across all three of them. You can see that it's still the same. So that's what you do in the second part of the lab. Okay, now we are about to measure currents through the resistors. When you measure a current, we're gonna use a current sensor and the current sensor has to be in series with each resistance. That is very important. So whenever you measure a voltage, you connect the voltage sensor in parallel across each one like we did. We cannot do that for a current sensor. It has to be in series. So you will have to remove so many cables and then insert the current sensor in such a way that the current sensor is in series. Let me show you what I mean. 
Now, uh, in order to measure currents, here is, the, is, is an easier method. See, what I have done is, I have connected the ends of all the three resistors to just this terminal here, S3. And that's a little bit tough because the resistors are just of enough length. So you gotta be careful, but I managed. So all three resistors, one of their ends is connected here. And, but their other ends are connected to S5, um, what is that, S6, S7, and S8. I removed the cables from here that connect those, but uh, I have the cables below here. You see this? I've connected this negative. So what I'm trying to do here is, uh, I have included this current sensor to measure the total current now. Because when I press the switch, uh, the current flows from the positive through this cable, through the switch. It has to go through the uh, cable for the current sensor, through the current sensor. Watch this. It comes here and then the current splits into three paths and all of them recombine as you can see. See that? So I have that connected. Uh, make sure that you have added the current sensor, you know, like I have already added it and I've removed the voltage sensor and I have the current sensor added and I've also uh, taken a measurement, that's why you see that there. Anyway, press down on the switch, hit record and you would see the current that flows. Hit stop. So that's how you measure that current. I hope you're understanding how the connections are made. Let me make this very clear. Right now, I have connected the current sensor to measure the current through R2. How do I know? Because I still have the path for the current through R1. Look at this. R1, there is this cable, which takes that current there. And for R3, I have this cable. See the white cable? But for R2, the current has to go through the sensor and out through the black into this. So if you got that idea, you would know where to put the current sensor for each case. Right now, it's measuring the current through R2, that measurement. So hit uh, and hit record, press the switch, gives you 0 0.0022 ampere, okay? All right, the way it is set up now, it is it's going to measure the current through R3, once again, because R3 is connected to, in such a way that the current has to go through the current sensor through the black into this cable. You see this, I've moved this cable. Now, R1 and R2, they have their own paths. R1 through this cable, R2 through the second cable. Now, along with the uh, document that I have provided, uh, the manual, uh, please use the second one, uh, which uses uh, less number of cables. With that manual and with this video, and with a lot of logic from you and hard work, you should be able to complete this lab. If you have any questions, do let me know. Thank you.